Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you are doing well. 2022 is shaping up to be a bigger year for Disney Plus than 2021 was, and I guess that is for the better, because you can take a fall, Disney, but you better come back. <laughs> I, I trust you do. Yeah, Disney's spending more for their content, and their money is all in on next year, where we get some great series. Thought it would be fun to create a top 10 most anticipated Disney Plus shows and movies or projects Disney Plus originals while we're at it. Hello, fellow Disney Plus watcher. I'm excited to talk about Disney Plus with you today. Let me start by giving two honorable mentions that didn't make the list but are interesting projects. Zootopia Plus. It's been a while since I've seen Zootopia, the movie that came out in 2016, but here we are. It's getting a semi-sequel. An interesting pick, given that there's a six-year gap between the movie and the series, like release, not in story, but the sequel series promises to be an anthology series focusing on different characters and different stories within the city of Zootopia. I like this idea, because the main thing I took away from, from uh, 2016's Zootopia is how rich the world is and how much, how much care was put into to creating a believable environment. To have a lot of time in the form of a series to see a whole lot more from this world piques my interest, definitely. Next honorable mention that did make the list is Cars on the Road, a series about Lightning McQueen and Mater on a road trip, meeting old and new characters, visiting different places and meeting new friends and foes. Now, that is just a very basic but effective template to have some weekly cartoon adventures. And it's made by Pixar, the great Pixar itself. Maybe you remember that the series Monsters at Work, which was streaming this year, was using all all Pixar's Monsters Incorporated IP, but was actually written and created by the TV division of Disney Animation. Now, could you imagine how much better this series would be if Pixar made it? I am not the biggest fan of Cars, that's why I didn't make the list, but a new original series produced by Pixar Animation is something I'm automatically interested in. Heck, they could animate a turd for 20 episodes and I would still watch it. Okay, now for my top 10 anticipated Disney Plus projects next year. Coming in at the last place is Miss Marvel, a totally new character from Marvel Studios, which brings the teen high school comedy back into the MCU after the Spider-Man films brought that ingredient into the mix. It kind of looks like the perfect fit for a Disney Plus show. It brings the nerdy hero trope a lot of his subscribers like so much and combines it with the accessible teen girl show and you know, it looks fun, lighthearted fun. I, I trust Marvel Studios with this one. And it's always nice when we get a new character to unpack. I'm not that familiar with her powers yet, but that's not even that important, I think. I really hope it delivers a good story and I have a feeling it will. It's also interesting that our main character is played by Iman Vellani, who never did any other registered movie, short film or TV show, like ever. Her IMDb page is blank. That piques my interest. What is so great about her that she was able to prove herself just with an audition and was trusted by the executive to take on this role? For a Marvel project, this makes me even more interested. This series is coming out in the summer of 2022, by the way. Next up is Baymax. I liked Big Hero 6 and I really liked the personality of the big white marshmallow looking guy Baymax. Now, when this got announced, I wasn't sold immediately. I needed a little more to convince me that this series would be worthwhile and interesting enough. And to build it all around this comic relief secondary character from a movie I saw saw back in 2014, uh, you have to convince me. By the way, 2014, that makes it eight years after the original movie. But recently the trailer dropped and I absolutely love the sense of humor of it. It doesn't happen often that I find myself laughing out loud multiple times during a trailer. Healthcare. What's that? Borax? I am Baymax. This series is coming out in the summer of 2022 and I'm looking forward to it more than I initially expected. Bring on the silly humor. Number eight on my list is Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Cause you know how well that worked for Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously, the comedic nature of the Guardians movies lend themselves for some holiday fun. But one of the reasons I'm so interested in this is I don't really have a clue what this thing will be. I have no idea. What was the hilarious story idea that the team who actually started shooting this back to back with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, you know, the new movie, thought, hey, we really have to do this holiday special. We have such a good idea. What is that idea? Even if that means we'll be, because that, you know, because that means they're even more busy during the production of Guardians 3. I have the feeling this thing is going to be very small scaled with without any action or planet hopping. I mean, the crew is shoehorning this thing within Guardians 3's production schedule. Something tells me the idea James Gunn had for this special is somehow hilarious and worthwhile and on a very small scale. Maybe it's just the Guardians sitting down and unwrapping presents. <laughs> Moving on to number seven is Pinocchio. For those of you who don't know, there's actually two Pinocchio movies coming out in 2022. One is from Guillermo del Toro, a stop motion film, Darker, set during Mussolini's 
fascist regime. Now that one is even is even more exciting to me. But the Disney Plus version is also one I'm very interested in. Directed by the seasoned director Robert Zemeckis and with great cast members like Tom Hanks as Geppetto and Luke Evans as Satan. Boy. I mean Luke Evans as the coachman, both Pinocchio versions are potential bangers. But actually the fact that we have these two very different versions makes me more excited for Disney's version because the comparison game will be fun. <laughs> you know, it, I hope they release them in the same week for that reason, that would be cool. And Alan Silvestri is doing the score, now, now that's already an album that's going on repeat right there. Let's look at number 6, Moon Knight. Now, I know next to nothing about this comic character, but from what we know, damn, this is gonna be cool, probably. So this show is about a CIA agent suffering from multiple identity disorder and seems to be Marvel's version of Batman, in a way, and Oscar Isaac is playing the main character. He's a great name, he's a great star power. The first teaser we got on Disney Plus Day was really short, but it already got so much flavor to it, and it has the potential to be the MCU's darkest project yet. And I came across this set image on IMDb. Holy shit, this looks awesome. If this is gonna be Mark Spectre, final costume? Wow, it's gonna be cool. Coming into the top five, next up is The Bad Batch Season 2. Oh yes, you bet Star Wars shows are gonna be high up my list. I really, really liked The Bad Batch. Sure, it had a few duds, but I, it kind of served as the perfect sequel to Clone Wars in, in the way that it showed the transition period and clones without a feeling of purpose, a story about how to adapt in an ever-changing galaxy. We still don't know everything about Omega, the Empire grows stronger, Crosshair is still going to be a major part of the story. I'm sure the second season will up the ante and present more impactful storylines. I hope for a long and healthy future for the Bad Batch and I'm stoked for more pre-episode 4 defected clone stories. Number 4 would be Secret Invasion. Arguably the biggest Marvel Studios property coming to Disney Plus next year and the big part of why I'm so excited is because I know how much of a big deal the comic book run is and how huge of a name Secret Invasion is for the comic book community, which I'm not a part of though, but maybe someday. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury looks to be the main character. Ben Mendelsohn is back as Talos. Kobe Smulders returns as Maria Hill. A lot of great characters returning. We get a continuation of the most interesting aspect of the movie Captain Marvel, which I didn't really enjoy all that much, but, but the scrolls are really promising enough to be excited about. Starting off the top three, I picked Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Need I say more? Ewan McGregor returning, Hayden Christensen returning as Darth Vader. Great concept art was revealed on Disney Plus Day. It promises to be something special. Also because Deborah Chow, who directed episode 3 and episode 7 of The Mandalorian. Now, the reason it's still the lowest of the live action Star Wars stuff from next year, I was initially really skeptical for the series. It's taking place in a time period where Obi-Wan was laying low and just looking after Luke. Now, apparently he had a big adventure worth making a series about within this time frame and he faces Darth Vader again. Now that further cheapens the moment in episode four, so... So that's a bit of a bummer. But if that means getting a great show from a great director with Ewan McGregor returning as well as Hayden Christensen, yes, of course my heart is beating faster knowing that it, that is coming to Disney+. Plus. So I'd be lying if, if I told you I'm not pumped for this series. We're almost there. My number two pick is Andor. Cassian Andor and I figure multiple new characters going on missions during the early days of the rebellion count me freaking in. There's so much potential. We're, we're gonna see so many different planets. And in Rogue One, we got hints of a complicated history for Cassian. So I expect a lot of character development, which Obi-Wan Kenobi already has, to be honest. And I must say, the concept art that was shown blew me away even more than Obi-Wan Kenobi's. Dude, why are you comparing this so much to the Obi-Wan show? Well, because those are the two new Star Wars shows in 2022. And hey, Andor Season 1 is 12 episodes long. Think about that. Both seasons of Mandalorian were 8 episodes each, Boba Fett is 7 episodes, Obi-Wan is gonna be 6, and Andor is gonna be 12? Now, it... <laughs> It'll probably be 20 minute episodes, maybe they'll release two every week, but still, so many locations and planets are up for exploration and I can't freaking wait for this series. Now, on a side note, before I reveal my number one, yeah, She-Hulk is not on my list, that's right. That's right. Not because I don't think the show can be good. Maybe it's cool, but my anticipation dropped significantly after they changed that really cool title card into this. It's like Marvel wants to manage expectation by creating a new, much worse logo that actually more has the Netflix, the Marvel Netflix, the cheaper vibe to it. And then the little teaser also did practically nothing for me. So I just wanted that, that thought out there. That's why all of Marvel and Star Wars is on my list, except for this one. Let's hope for the best, but I'm troubled and believe this could be Marvel's first real Disney Plus stinker.
I, I, I have a feeling. Or, or I Am Groot is gonna be pointless and underwhelming too, who knows. But I don't wanna leave you waiting. My number one most anticipated Disney Plus show is The Mandalorian Season 3. This is the way. This is the way. Yeah, a bit of a cheat. We had two seasons already where Mando is developed from a cold bounty hunter to a loving and caring father and potential ruler of Mandalore. But here's the thing, with Grogu now out of the picture, I might be even more excited. Wait, 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 wait. Don't get me wrong, I love Grogu. But really, if we knew where we're gonna have another planet hopping season with fetch quests, would we be excited? Well, yeah. Would we be pumped? Nah, if, if I speak for myself, not really. Because then you kind of know what is what, what you're gonna expect. Now, season three is probably about true Mandalorian history, the retaking of Mandalore, the Darksaber, and we'll probably see Din Djarin grow out of this uh, This Is The Way clan. I love the whole story on Mandalore with Maul, Pre Vizsla, and the whole history there is just so rich. Now, if stuff like that could play into this new season, it has the potential to be the most mind-blowing season yet. So that is my top 10 most anticipated Disney Plus shows and movies of 2022. I'm thinking about wrapping this up. Thank you so much for watching. The future of Disney is bright but uncertain. I made a video about my concerns for the streaming platform moving forward if that interests you at all, it's linked in the top right. I'm curious, what are the projects you are most excited for? Be sure to let me know in the comment section. Don't forget, if you like discussing DC Plus content, make sure to hit that mysterious red button. Did you like this video? Then there is another button to express that. Thank you so much. I'll be back this Wednesday when the second episode of The Book of Boba Fett comes out. For now, have a wonderful day and see ya.